Welcome, beautiful people, to the round number 713 of me trying. And today it will be, it will be, I don't know, looking some shit, shit up uh, for tomorrow's interview. I think it will be awkward uh, and funny. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling nervous. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. So, uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll just see. Um, so, we will start with the typing exercise. Try to keep this down. And then that we will do for three minutes in the, each round. And 35 minutes we I will spend on... Uh, well, first, apparently looking up the solid again, because I already forgot again. Uh, what the hell is that? Uh, yeah. So, let's get into it. I think that would make up for really good stream if I stream that process. But I'm not sure if they would like it. I forgot to start the timer, huh? I can fry you up. You would Yeah. Yeah, that that sounds that sounds good actually. We can I, I'm all for it. Uh we can do that. So, how do we do this? Like, uh, the Thank you. 
And if you will dodge written questions, we can discuss. Yeah. I'm okay with everything. Maybe the, uh, the Discord voice would be... Oh fuck, <laughs> I screwed up again. Uh, might be more interactive. Okay, so Hodor, oh, Hodor, Hodor, Hodor. So, I will jump on the DVD stream channel. Okay, cool. On the Discord. So cool, so the first one, solid. I don't know, it was maybe like single responsibility, something, list of principle. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Single responsibility, open clause, list of substitution, interface segregation, dependency, inversion principle. Okay. There should be never more than one reason. Okay, so single open closed. Open for extension but closed for modification. I see. List of substitution functions that use pointers or references to base classes must be able to use objects of derived classes without knowing it. Yeah, so that's basically polymorphism. Uh, interface segregation, many client specific interfaces are better than one general purpose inter interface. Okay. And dependency upon abstraction, no. Depend upon abstractions, not concretions. Yeah, okay, so, uh, okay. What was the open closed? open for extension but closed for modification so that basically means okay so i can talk about it like a little bit more in detail right for my purpose i guess oh hey hold on uh i don't hear it well so i'll stop the music and pump up the volume welcome to the stream there he is hey clasher Nice. Can you can you try to say once again again uh, again? I need to yeah. So I your volume so need to be. You hear me well right now? Yes, I can hear you well, but I want to listeners to hear you well too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So should I uh, increase my mic volume or something? Uh, I did modify it on my end already, so it is okay. All good. Okay. So like follow up question uh, to the solid. Uh, and usually I don't care whether the candidate knows them by from memory. Uh -huh. I can uh, like usually tell them what they are. And uh, the question would be um, like how you apply these principles to your code. So what, what does it mean to your code? How you, when you write your code, how you apply single responsibility? Can you give me an example? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we can go point by point from the solid principles, right? So the single responsibility principle uh, that each of the class or function or like any like logical uh, part of the code should uh, should be handling just one thing. There should be like one thing going on, uh, basically. Uh, 
So the, the main reason is to avoid when I fix feature B to decrease the risk of me uh, damaging the feature X uh, at the same time, right? So if it is possible uh, to separate uh, like some logic into like uh, separate things, you know, you should do so. And in a code, let's say an example. Uh, so one of the example would be like the separation in the layers, right? Which we have, we have the, uh, the endpoint layer, uh, we have the like the service or the, the, the logic, the business logic layer, and then we have uh, then we have the repository layer. In theory, you can uh, you you can uh, uh, you can uh, put it everything into one file, and it will work. Uh, fine, I guess, but uh, I, I wouldn't recommend it because uh, it's, it's it will be just a huge blob of code. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that, uh, that, uh, that's fine. Um, so uh, in layer, uh, the separation is there, so that's good. So what about the class? If I have small uh, methods in the class, um, should they be from the same feature? I don't know, or or they could be like in in themselves uh, independent, like separated by by the function. I'm and sorry, I, I I did not catch the uh, uh, I did not catch the the beginning. Could could you repeat it, please? Yeah, of course. Uh, so in the class, we have many uh, methods, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So. Um, is there a limit how many of them can be there uh, based on single responsibility? Um, no, no. Uh, my understanding is no. Uh, it is not uh, the matter of the number of functions, but what they are dealing with. So uh, if uh, half of them are setting values and other half of them uh, getting values uh, for fetching from other sources, so do they uh, uh, fit to live in one class or uh, there's some separation has to be done? Okay, so in terms of like, uh, so let's say that we have like a classic Pojo in Java. Uh, and if we are talking about like sitting and getting uh, the thing, so uh, that immediately makes me think about sitters and getters, right? And yeah. those definitely belongs uh, to uh, the class, but, yeah, but if, if if there is like some more logic, like let's say accessing a database or uh, yeah, accessing a database would be a good uh, good thing. That part which we make the realization of the connection to the database should not be in the uh, in the uh, in the in the setter uh, or of this class. And that is uh, like separate piece, which should be uh, uh, which should be put elsewhere than to the class. Does that answer the question? No. Um, mm -hmm. So your sample with Pojo with setters and getters, that's fine. But imagine you are implementing the service, and usually, if it, if it's fat service, we have reading and writing to the database there. If we uh, build on your uh, example, right? Mm -hmm. So does that service uh, complies with single responsibility? Mm. Because no, we that always should, have that should, know. that should. I think that should call like uh, like another layer the. Uh, repository layer uh, in a service that should be there should be just the logic if we are talking about the, the back end right yes for now we are in the back end mm -hmm. and uh, still uh, service whether it uses repository to do these actions or it does it on its own 
we can shift uh, like deeper if you want to be closer to the database uh, we can shift to the repository uh, class and then uh, we still get there and have those methods defined like spring data jpa uh, gives you to like allows you to write the, the methods like find something save something or or uh, similarly, uh, so does that interface then complies with single learn spot responsibility? If it does all the reading, all the writing, and reading for different reasons. I'm not sure if the audio break up or something, but I uh, I catch the beginning, but now I did not catch the the last thing which you were saying. Could you oh. uh, could you repeat that, please? Yeah, let, like I'm not on Wi-Fi. I don't know, don't understand why that's uh, breaking up for you. Okay, so I'm trying again. Um, so uh, let's go to the repository, uh, which is closest to the database. There's no yes. deeper, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because you are still leaning towards it. Uh, so mm -hmm. whether the Spring Data JPA repository as it mm -hmm. is defined, mm -hmm. complies with single responsibility when in practice it contains all kind of reading operations like find this, find that, buy this, and so on, plus saving. Mm -hmm. So does that interface uh, complies with single responsibility principle? Uh, to my understanding, yes. So, but there are different responsibilities there. Uh, yes, uh, I would view it that the responsibility is to access the database, and that would be the point where I would uh, uh, I would see as the purpose of the of the class or or the place. Okay, that's uh, that's fair. Uh, so, if you um, build on the on the idea that uh, single responsibility is the single reason to change so the interface and its implementation changes only when database structure changes right mm -hmm. so that in that sense that's uh, all good what about the service layer then uh, usually in the fat service uh, pattern where all the methods of business logic uh, belonging to some entity is in single service. And we uh, implement that service with all those methods. Does that service comply with uh, single responsibility? Um, well, let's say like, uh, well, yes and no, uh, because there is one information which I'm missing and that would be if I would have like some uh, some object uh, objects in the uh, in the repository, uh, you know, like I would I would expect that uh, that the service would handle uh, just the uh, just the business logic for some part of the of the area of the interest of the application. There should not be a logic for all of the objects we have in the database uh, like the user management uh, I don't know calculating taxes uh, and so on so I would say that there uh, should be uh, the responsibility of the of the service should handle just uh, I don't know let's say the user management right so there will be I don't know like updating a profile picture setting passwords uh, and, and so on like like that but um, doesn't that uh, um, on its own it gives you different uh, reasons to change like I change the method that is saving picture uh, when there's a logic change on that and I'm updating uh, password hashing uh, algorithms when that's is has to be upgraded and there's a different reasons to change. Yeah. So those uh, methods uh, do not belong to next to each other. 
while they are updating actually single uh, entity, right? True, true. So uh, that that pattern of that service, whether it's uh, around the single entity or not, is usually um, um, uh, while violating single responsibility principle. Mm -hmm. And um, that's not always a bad case because it gives simplicity in the beginning of uh, application evolution. And uh, as a matter of fact, that um, simplicity it gives you speed and it depends on how you deal with it, how you put the boundary of uh, interfaces between, uh, uh, between uh, layers. So between the, the endpoints and service and so on. So, uh, so that is how I view it, and uh, others can uh, argue uh, differently the same way you did uh, your argumentation, and depends on uh, on you know the the party you are having conversation with, and mm -hmm. um, it's really nice to see other opinions, and uh, when there's a conflict between opinions, mm -hmm. it. Uh, uh, has to stay at the uh, discussion level, not trying to prove uh, something, you know, uh, this is correct all the times. Yeah, so uh -huh. that everything, everything is correct until some threshold, you know. Yeah, I do agree. I do agree. I do agree. It's uh, also uh, why I kind of just say that like some programming language is better than the other one because it always depends on the context what you are using it for and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um i Good. we would move on 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 next principles uh, okay but i have to uh, jump off uh, for uh, some time and uh, mm -hmm. i will be back in uh, later today so i okay, can cool. uh, continue but... oh nice 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 okay uh, let's do that. Okay. So, do you want to uh, do? Do you will jump off right now or? Yeah, I, okay. I will jump off right now and come back later. Okay. And uh, you, you, as you feel uh, the how the single responsibility was tackled, you can similarly try to you know decouple um, address the other ones and other mm -hmm. ones and how you apply them to your code and don't be afraid to use uh, actual things from your code as a sample uh, to whether you apply it or not, uh, and and that's it uh, because uh, the there is a valid uh, answer that I understand that I'm violating it here, but I'm doing that because, and those reasons are also a good example to show you that you understand the cons and pros and that you are balancing some other um, values instead of what could be uh, said as perfect design. Yeah, I, I like that approach. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will do that. So, see you. Okay, see you. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. So, that was uh, our friend Nerius. Hi, Manevichius. If anyone of you would like to fry me with some interview questions as well, uh, you can do it in the Discord. Uh, you are welcome uh, to do so. I'm there in a channel, or otherwise, I will continue in going and searching random interview questions on a, on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I have to. Uh, okay. So. Put the volume of this down. Play some music to the background. Okay, cool. So, so we went over the single responsibility principle. Uh, there was what it was, you know, and then when we want to break it, uh, break down that rule, right? And one of the good examples which Nereus mentioned uh, was that uh, we can achieve a simplicity, right? So let's say uh, on, a, on a service level, 
you have the we would have the repository service and then the how is it called in backend i forgot again uh, have a look mm -hmm. i haven't been to the backend for a while source uh, do, 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 do. Hold on. Here, backend. Da, 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 service. Come on. Uh, da, da, in the end, repository, service, controller. Repository, access to the database, service, the business logic, controller, the endpoints. Right? Yep. Okay, so those are uh, the things and I am talking about breaking up the single responsibility principle. Because we could have like many classes which would uh, which would be breaking this, you know, like in a service there we could have like some logic about like saving the ingredients, like calculating hash or whatever, but then we would end up with many classes in here and it would be uh, hard to have a good uh, like understanding at a glance, uh, I guess. Module view controller module uh, module style. Well, it is the module view controller style is a response to the things which kind of happens on a uh, on a front end because here I'm not uh, generating the view at all uh, in the back end. That happens. Uh, that happens in here uh, on the front end uh, for me, and it's clearly visible. Like uh, okay, in the app, and let's say I have the ingredient, right? So we have the uh, model. What was the C stand for? Uh, MVC, what was the C was for? No. Oh, oh, thank you. Model view controller, yes. So here, uh, the model uh, basically is the, uh, is the data in here represents the, here's the class, uh, you know, and then you have it has some fields on it here we have like the ingredient uh, array that is the model in here right then the controller is basically this like logic you know we are getting the ingredient whatever and then the view is actually here you know that's the html which the user views right so that's that, that, that's that so that is happening on angular side uh, in this application, in this particular application, it is possible to have it on the back end too. Uh, let's say you will generate the web pages with something like Timely for some other like uh, web page generator and just forward that uh, to to the client. That's possible, but it's not happening in my application. Okay, so. I think we kind of went over the single responsibility principle. So now we have the open closed principle. Uh, so the main reason, as I understand, for the open closed principle is that if basically this is why. In case you will open a piece of code and you change something there there is a risk that you will introduce some error right and if you separate things in smaller like pieces 
and uh, they are already tested and you don't have to modify them at all, you can be fairly confident that they are working properly, right? And this open close principle basically says like, write the fuck your program in a way when you have most of the codes which you will not change, you know, if there is something which you can extract away to the corner and not have to change it at all, do it. But the program also should be uh, able to be extended, you know. Uh, this is like the extension, so you will add a new module which will, or class or whatever, which will have like some connection with already existing with already existing code without modifying the uh, already tested thing which you have uh, have in here so uh, that is that is here now uh, like simple registration system it's fixed with single use you can expand it not modify its functionality So maybe I would like to read what they are thinking about it. Maybe I'm not sure if I understand it exactly how you mean it. Registration system. Yeah, let's say that you will have like another let's say you would have a registration system which would have a module which would save the uh, the person of the registration right but uh, let's say then you would change how how you create ac the actual users or the data right and that could be extracted away to like another thing right so you would have something which connects to the saving part you know and the saving part is now safe you know and i don't touch it right and it expects the data in the right format or uh, go going into it uh right and when i change how the user or whatever is created i should exchange this you know maybe maybe i will I will add like some layer which will translate it from I don't know different different part but not modify its original function yes 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 that that is my understanding that is my best understanding of it yes so should be open for extension but closed for modification that is such an entity can allow its behavior to be extended without modifying it's source code. Two ways. Both ways do generalization, inheritance, delegate functions are resolved apart from the dilemma, but the goals, techniques, and results are different. Blah blah blah. A module will be said to be open if it's available for extension. It should be possible to add fields to the data structure. Okay, so here we are talking about modifying itself. Or new elements, okay. To be closed. If it's, okay, so that's something different. They are talking about something different than I described. If it's, if it's available to, to use by other modules. So that was half of true what I what I was telling. This assumes that the module has been given a well-defined stable description. Okay, so basically this says that it will have a defined interface, right? That means the outputs and inputs are defined. Oh, well, it is because of my keyboard is like weird and, and I like to talk about keyboard. So I think that's that, that's the only reason. 
<laughs> but I was thinking about getting like the white keycaps so it shows better on a uh, on a stream or maybe I can fix like more light you know in here so it will be visible better I guess uh, I don't know let's see and there was a hydrate and I'm thirsty Oh nice, we have a link in here. This is, oh, very nice. Thank you, Nightlight. Ah, oh, this is horrible. Do you see like how much space this takes? I have like this teeny tiny sliver of... <laughs> to actually read anything. Yeah, but if it has like good information, then yeah, who cares, you know. There are some web pages which look horrible, but have like so good information, just, I, I, I don't care. It could be covered in shit, but I will still take out the diamonds. Principle as the most important principle of object oriented design. Blah, blah, blah. What's the definition? Definition! <laughs> and he doesn't start with the definition, he just says like. <laughs> yeah, it might be uh, because I am from Czech Republic and well, the languages are different, but. Uh, when you are coming, you are Chinese or uh, English speaking, English native, I, I can see that there, there might be like very similar. And we are neighboring countries too, so. Software entities classes modules should be open for extension, but closed for modification. Principle is great. It tells you write your code so that you will be able to add new functionality without changing the existing code. Ah, the main that that's the main like add new functionality without changing the already existing. Uh huh. Oh god, my oh, my teeth hurts again. I have to I have to go to the dentist. I'm kind of afraid that we want to copy and paste into your ID. Oh, yeah, sure. Insert toothpaste. <laughs> okay, so here we have what? Yes, that's constructor, public method, add grand coffee, and okay, fuck you. This, you will go away. Is, is this the guy? No. This, okay. No stuff. This. Way. On. Bye. Here we go. Looks better, huh? <laughs> Fixed. <laughs> now I can see more. Uh, how else do our burpees? They are. Oh wow, there's a lot of things to do. Oh, the burpees are. What do you mean? How are those burpees? They are turned on, right? Or they are not? Yeah, they are. Dun, 
Okay, so we have like some some fields. Then we have a constructor. Oh, it's some confusing when you see the type before before the name of the because I spent lately most of the time in a in the front end in the TypeScript it's reversed. Okay, here's the body. Yeah, you do something. Brew coffee, some, some things. Then we have. Coffee selection, filter, coffee, whatever. you wider okay I will you know what I will copy it because this oh well what they have to say you can use the control such a simple coffee machine web right let's do that oh basically This is also a field. This is a function. Okay, cool. The basic of your app class. Okay, where's the where's the point? Yeah, sure. Here it is. Applying the clothes. Okay, that's it. From now on, you can stay in bed until you smell the fresh coffee prepared for your basic. You're oh, well, welcome. Someone pasted it in here as well. Nightlight. Did paste in the, the link. See the void method. Yeah. Great map of available coffee coffee beans. Okay, so we have that thing, then we put something in it. Then we create the machine. And then we put the machine in the app. That's this guy. <sighs> yeah, how the fuck this demonstrates the the open close principle? I mean, what I, what I, what I would point is the UML at the end oh there's another code okay cool yeah it's also like they are so tied together because now I see this right and first what what I think about is like inversion of control Right, which is the another one of the of the principles, right, of the uh, of the solid dependency injection principle. Okay, so well, 
the round number one is done, uh, at least this timer says so. That is better than perfect and I will do the redeems and then we will continue with the round two and we will look into more for what should I prepare, prepare for. So yeah, let's do that. So stop the recording.